product knowledge, other things, we can get it. But the honesty, discipline, punctuality, attitude, we never get it. It has to come by your inner heart. Hi everyone, I'm Marty Logan. Thank you for clicking on this episode of Nepal Now on the Move, where we speak with some of the huge number of people leaving and occasionally returning to this country wedged between India and China. Bharat Adhikari is another former migrant worker who returned to live in Nepal, but his story could hardly be more different than Sushma's, who we heard from in our previous episode. I chatted recently with Bharat at the Himal Media studio in Patandoka. After more than a decade working in the retail sector in the Persian Gulf countries of Oman and Dubai, Bharat and his family decided it was time to come home. He describes the aha moment when he returned home from work one day and realized that his mother and daughter had almost everything that money could buy to make them happy living overseas but not a community. Bharat broke the news to his boss in 2020, at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, and the man suggested he was crazy. But Bharat insisted that it was the best thing for his aging mother and young daughter, and finally convinced him. Although today he still gets offers from his former employer in Dubai to return. Aside from the decision to leave his successful career in exchange for society and culture in Nepal, what I find interesting about Bharat's story is that his first venture here failed. Well, not exactly. He gave up on starting a new business when he realized that he would have to ingratiate himself with government officials. Bharat understood then that having worked only in Gulf countries, he needed to be operating within a disciplined system. Luckily, he's now found it in his new job. Please listen now to my conversation with Bharat Adhikari. Bharat Adhikari, welcome to Nepal Now on the Move. Thank you very much, Mr. Martin. I'm very happy to see you here. We're going to talk about today mainly your migration to Oman, a country in the Middle East, of course, your career there, your work there for a number of years, your return to Nepal, like many Nepalis, or more and more Nepalis, I think, are, are coming back to the country after their migration experience and looking for a way to work here to use the experience that they've gained. But before we get into all of that, uh, tell me a little bit about where in Nepal you were born and where you grew up and went to school. Actually, I was born in uh, Nepal, uh, Gandaki province, in Tano district. Um, village name is Achalchor. And I grew up there. My study was continued in Bandipur, Notre Dame uh, school. And then after I finished my um, SLC from Damoli, Satyavati, then, uh, then my college started at, uh, uh, in Chiton, Narangad, uh, which is Balkumari College. And I completed my uh, bachelor degree in uh, TU, in, from the Chiton. Then I came to Kathmandu. Then I started hunting, you know, going abroad for migrant employment as, as other Nepali youth did. Yeah. Great, thank you. That was uh, very concise. So when you finished your studies, did you know already that you wanted to go abroad or was it something that just came up as you were looking for, you know, your first job and your first experience? Yeah, actually, um, you know, when I uh, finished my bachelor degree, at that time there was a, a civil war in Nepal, and it just they came in agreement in peace. The the country situation is very worst uh, in terms of getting the new job, and then there was no choice, you know. So then I applied to go abroad as a migrant. Okay, and so we know you ended up in Oman. Yeah. a country on the Arabian Peninsula. Yeah. Was that a particular destination you had in mind, or was it just the best opportunity that came up at the time? 
at the time wherever we can find the uh, the opportunity we will apply blindly mm. as major majority of nepalese youth those who are planning to go abroad the simply they apply they will they they were not aware of the company profile they were not aware of the job description nothing you know same like me also so i applied uh, randomly to one of one or two three my main power those who are recruiting the people to go abroad so they called me for interview and then uh, luckily you know i got twice or thrice interview and i succeed to pass and to go abroad by the way i didn't go first oman i i selected and then i went to dubai and in dubai i got the training and then i shifted uh, to oman and and so at this point you're just out of your finish your studies you're young you're enthusiastic and looking for adventure i think was probably part of it as well as earning money but were you not worried about leaving nepal and you know leaving your family leaving all of that behind and going to a completely different culture where the main language obviously is not nepali or or even english you know i'm from middle class family my family are uh, farmer so obviously on that period of uh, time uh, we really need the money everyone need the money to survive and here there are as i said you there are uh, just finished the civil war and the, the things are destroyed at that time the opportunity was very less going europe and america for either for the study or the for the employment there was very less opportunities at that time so there were there were no choice rather than uh, Arabian Peninsula. Okay, I see, I see. Yeah. So then first in Dubai, then you moved to Oman. Tell me about Oman. Uh, what was it like when you arrived? Was it a good job that you had from the beginning? Because obviously you stayed there for a while. Yeah, well, in 2008, uh, I, I have been selected around in uh, uh, January, February, and I went to Dubai as, as a sales associate. i didn't know the the company profile i just knew that from the manpower and the interviewer that you are in the sales associate i can say at the time i am quite a lucky guy so in dubai when i arrived and it was quite a good company and the brand is quite luxurious brand the company was the white company london until 6 month there was probationary period at the time i was in mall of emirates i was working in one of the outlet then after finishing probationary period and i i work hard with a, with the you know discipline honesty and my management team has absorbed me and uh, they announced that there is a vacancy in oman as a um, sales supervisor then they ask me whether you want to go oman we have this this vacancy they saw me some potential and then of course if i get the opportunity why not and i read about the oman it's very good place is uh, never never country of the oman a uh, dubai actually so then after 8 9 month uh, having staying in dubai in mall of emirates then i shifted to oman as a sales supervisor end of the 2008 i went there when i entered the oman and when i started to work there then i started to think about to to build the career there when you see the career when you see your career in that field then everything you will give for that in 2010 you know at that period uh, there was recess economic crisis so that that crisis has happened to uh, middle east also all over uh, europe also so in 2010 the mall management has uh, you know announced one competition between the outlet there are 190 outlets uh, on that city center the outlet who will do the sales growth versus last year that outlet will get the you know gift or award or prizes then uh, then i feel that that competition is actually for me and my team so at that time you were in charge of this particular store or yeah i was yeah. in charge on that okay. particular store okay it motivated me also let's grab this uh, contest then we can move forward then we work together uh, with me there are uh, eight mem- team we were t- total so i am leading to them also we all team were organized and we focused on that um, performance and then luckily 
we won that prize. We have sales growth of 193 percentage versus last year. Wow, that's very impressive. Yeah. And then we we were very happy and the mall management has interviewed like like this way on the news times of Oman and you know national news and suddenly suddenly the things are turning out right everything is looking very good for you your career is Korea. moving along as you kind of dreamt it would exactly exactly so we all are encouraged and the the amount of like equivalent to 10000 dirham is for store in charge manager and 10000 dirhams for the staff they have announced the gift voucher of the, that amount so at that time the amount was very huge how much money would that be in nepali rupees or us dollars in nepali rupees 10000 means at that time 3 lakhs around 2 2.5 um, wow that is a lot at of that money time, yeah. so 3 250000 rupees to 300000 rupees yeah, roughly yeah okay as a, as a, you know, the, the result of hard work, discipline, and um, all, all those things. So that inspired a lot to build my career. Then from that day, you know, it was published in all over. The people knows me. Which store won that competition? The white company. Who was the manager? My name was definitely there. And, uh, and then I, again, motivated with the passion of working with the uh, sales the passion of doing customer service, it helps everywhere to me. The, I, I earn the respect. I knew how to um, work with the team. So these things makes me to work more years in the retail. And did you feel like you were doing something that you were meant to do? Something that maybe you didn't know before you started, but when you got to this point you realize that, wow, this is something that I am just naturally really good at, that fulfills me. Was it like that? Yes. Uh, when when uh, something touch you by heart and it really gives you something in your future, and they, if you see the career there, then it, it becomes naturally also. Yeah, and then... You know, the passion and the, the hard work and the honesty is, is the key of the making the career as, a, as, a, as my experience. Because product knowledge, other things, we can get it. But the honesty, discipline, punctuality, attitude, we never get it. It has to come by. That is most important, what I learned during that period of my migration employment. Really. Great. And so... From there on, you continued going up, you continued being successful. At some point, you took a break and came to Nepal and got married. I know that. Yeah. During these years as you were working in Oman. What year was that when you got married? Uh, in 2008, between, uh, 2008 to 2010, between, and, on that period. Okay, okay. Yeah. So your career is going very well. And then after some years, you make a big decision. So tell me about that. Yeah, and uh, the things were going well, and uh, we family were there in Oman in 2011. And then 2012, uh, I started to think, let, let me grab the opportunity to other company. Yeah, and uh, I was almost four years working the same company. And, the, you know, the, the human nature is this. People doesn't want to stay in one place always. So I tried for opportunity. And in 2012 end, where my wife was also there, and my wife also, midwife nurse, actually, in her profession. So we both are were busy, and uh, fortunately, I got the opportunity to, you know, in another company as a higher position with the higher facilities. Uh, it was the H&M brand. So from 2012 to 2020, end of 20, I have been associated with the H&M in Middle East. Then uh, life was going on, and... Um, we got a daughter in 2017, and we all family, my mother was there with me, all family were there. Comfortable life was there. Yeah. In 2018, we decided, uh, my wife and me, we decided, let's uh, move to Nepal. We not decided, we, uh, we discussed, because we feel that uh, one day we have to go. We, can, we cannot uh, stay forever here because for my old mother, because of my daughter, we need to give her better uh, study in our own country. And then we discuss and one day 
when me and my wife uh, came from the job at, at the night, my mother and daughter was waiting to us. And I realized that I just noted only today, but for the long years, they are doing the same things here. In Dubai or in Oman, in Middle East, to be very honestly, uh, there is very luxury life, comfortable life. You have everything there. But uh, for my mother and for my daughter, they, they don't have what they have in Nepal. It's, it's, it's pain to, to us, you know. There are two things uh, we can make them happy to enjoy them. One is in the mall, big malls we can take for enjoy. And another one is beach, ocean, sea, beach. Nothing more than that because it's very hot outside. More than that, important uh, what we feel at the time is we have to give proper socialism to our, our daughter. Socialization. Sorry, socialization. What, what me and my wife got from our parents. Right. So you're providing this very comfortable and, like you say, even luxurious life. Yeah. But you realize that at the end of the day when you come home, they're, in a way, bored and they're just really missing you yeah. because they don't really have a community around them. Yes. It's just you and your wife yeah. and the two of them. And like you say, these very particular places you can go and things you can do. But there's not that whole Nepali community and society that they would have when if they came here. Yes, yes. And uh, until when you will be there? And another important thing is my wife wants to do further study also in Nepal. She has already mastered in health and education, and she wants to continue in MPhil and PhD also. So she is continuing now. So, and in between 2015 to 2020, um, I, I, I was associated with NRN, non-resident no. Nepali community. Uh, in 2015, there was an earthquake in Nepal, and uh, it, every Nepalese feel very, you know, how to uh, help Nepal when we are in abroad. So at that time, I have very closely associated with NRN, and after that, uh, I'm executive members. I was in the beginning, and then I get in youth coordinator as a position, and then I have ended as a secretary. And uh, we work very closely to the embassy uh, for the for the needed people, you know, in Nepal. In other occasion also between 2015 to 2020. What year was it when you made the decision? Was it 2020 that you finally decided after talking about this with your family for so much that yes, okay, we're going to go back this year? Yeah, 2018 we discussed and we decided to go and we we check the you know the in online for my wife uh, admission for for the uh, for the further study and then in 2018 end i think uh, we came i came for vacation and they came for permanently my whole family and then um, my wife admit here and they started to living in nepal and we were decided after 2020 i will also permanently i will back to nepal and then according to the plan, I came, I resigned, and I came, I returned to Nepal. Okay, and I have to ask you, because obviously you're sharing all of this with people you're working with, other Nepalis living in Dubai, who you know, and Oman. How did people react when you said you were going back? I went to Oman, and within next day there was lockdown. Luckily, I reached there. And then we, will, we continue, I continue... Then at that period, a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, lost their job due to the pandemic. So when I gave my resignation to my, my company, my boss, he was telling me that you are mad to give the resign in this period. Many people are losing the job in this time. And how dare you do these things? Are you, are you, are you serious? Mm -hmm. He asked me twice. Mm -hmm. And then... Yes, you know, the decision was made and the family already back to Nepal and my mother is getting old and daughter is growing up. So at this time, we need to be with family, no matter of the rest of the things. So that was our decision and I convinced him because he also feel that ultimately, what, wherever you will go, whatever you do, ultimately you need the family in your whole life. Okay. And so you've returned uh, in 2020, you're all here. Did life go as you imagined it would go? 
Actually, not so easy. You know, here uh, at the time, the um, pandemic was just uh, finished and the life is uh, quite struggled here uh, because, you know, more than uh, 12 years I, I, I have been working in abroad and, uh, you know, that there is very good system, law, and everything is organized. Uh, we can, there is no chance to do, uh, you know, undisciplined things. So my, my 12 years career, what I learned is uh, there, and when I back suddenly here, it is quite difficult to adjust in this, uh, you know, environment. Uh, that there, there were challenges. There were a lot of challenges. Okay, okay, we, we can talk about that. And what about your daughter? She was seven at the time? No. Yeah, now she is getting now eight. Eight. So mm -hmm. then 2020, she would have been four? Yeah, four, four years around five, yeah, four or five yeah. years. Yeah. Uh, did she adjust quickly? Uh, yeah, she, not uh, easy because due to the climate and other things also, it's not easy, but she, uh, gradually she grabbed it. Right, and your mother, no problem, obviously, yeah. she's coming yeah. home. Mother yeah. is more than happy, you know, because uh, she is uh, from the farmer background and she loves to be here and uh, growing, growing up the f vegetable for her own need. So she is more than happy. Okay, okay. And so I, from what I know about migration and the people who return, and there are quite a few who return, mm. many of them want to start their own business. I think this yeah. is a dream of many people. Uh, I know it's not easy. Some succeed, some do not. So when you came back also, this is what you had in mind, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, I thought uh, I will do some, some uh, small business as per my experience, yeah? And we have planned, I, uh, we planned before we came here also. But uh, when you came here, when you come here, uh, the things are different what you thought. I have to share you. I have applied one company here to, get, to give me, you know, the dealership in, in my hometown, Chiton and Tano. And uh, with seeing my, my curriculum data, and they gave me without any deposit the dealership for two uh, district, and I was very happy for it. But you know the the, the registration process and other legal uh, activities is very very lengthy, and uh, you know the, we need to uh, beg the people who are in authority. But I did I cannot continue that uh, that business because of a lot of challenges were there. I had experience of doing job. Doing job and doing um, own business is quite different. Right. Yeah. Right. So I I have to change completely. Some people will will grab it, but I can't. You know, I'm investing the money, and I'm registering from my money. So why should I beg to people to do my work? Uh, so I I cannot uh, tolerate such things. Right, right. Yeah. So there was a lot of, you needed to do a lot of kind of relationship building. Exactly. Deal with different officials and yeah. get them on your side. Yeah, you know, under like, table. Uh, it it uh, really hurts me because, you know, I work from the system. But there are a lot of challenges and I, I gave up that business. And then you started looking, looking around for other opportunities. Yes. And found one quite quickly. I was not eagerly looking at that time period because I just came. And then um, when I go to shop, you know, in a shopping center or in a, in a small grocery shop or any other retail outlet, I feel that uh, there is uh, the gap of service. Yeah. And when I, when I ask to some owner or some um, um, salespeople, they are not respecting the customer. I feel I, I get that pinch, you know where my background was completely, we are completely, we feel that the customer is a god of our, my business. The retail is all about the customer service, you know, Martin, yeah? The people um, all have the product, but the gap is the uh, service and delivering the result. So it pains, and then I feel that I have to, you know, I have to explore my experience here in Nepal in some good organization in retail. Then I'm, I'm exploring, then luckily, I applied in in the website or um, the vacancy from the sales bay, and then uh, they called me for the interview, and then um, I started as an area manager on the grocery. That sales bay is a retail, one of the 
biggest largest retail chain in Nepal which has more than 35 stores uh, then uh, till now I am working as an operation manager in Salisbury and how was that in terms of adjustment I mean still you had very strong ideas about how things in retail should work um, and I'm sure that in Salisbury obviously there are some differences did it take you a long time to adjust or not really uh, actually, my background was, uh, experience was in uh, retail fashion, yeah, H&M and the white company. But in Salisbury, is completely FMCG, yeah, uh, food and grocery, which is quite, in, in terms of product, it is quite difficult to me to adjust. But, you know, my retail operation is same everywhere in the world. So um, product-wise, I'm still learning from my, you know, my seniors, my CEO, and, uh, you know, the things are quite different than there and here. Abroad, uh, where I'm, where we were working, people will see the career. They, they will give everything to learn. But here, the attrition rate, the people are moving. Um, they didn't see the career here, the young star, because uh, uh, most of them are, as you know, that they are planning for the abroad. So um, you've got this job, you've adjusted Sounds like it's going well, but I'm wondering, have you ever thought of going back? I know you said that you're still in touch with your former boss in Oman, and he's asked you to go back. Have you ever given it a thought, or you've really closed the door on returning? Actually, uh, there is no thought of returning or going back for, for again abroad. Yeah, in Dubai, still they are approaching me. My boss is still there. He's approaching, if you like, we are opening the new outlet. If you want to come, you are always welcome. But in my heart and our family, you know, we discussed and everything we finalized will no more for abroad, uh, for employment. Okay. So despite some bumps in the road, let's say, when you return to Nepal, you're happy enough here that you don't want to go anywhere else. And you mentioned also the young people who... You know, they might take a job, but they're always kind of looking for an opportunity, most of them outside of the country. It's almost like there's this feeling like you can't do it in Nepal. You can't go as high as you want to go, or you can't really succeed, or, you know, you can't make it in Nepal the way you could make it if you went outside of the country. And so you have done that. You've gone outside of the country, and now you're back. Now that you're looking for people to work for you, how do you feel about young people who all want to leave Nepal and aren't willing to stay? Do you, do you understand their situation? Do you think it's fine to let them go? We just need to encourage them to come back or the government should be doing more to stop them from going in the first place? Yeah, actually for a young star, see, uh, the abroad, you can go to get the knowledge and experience. Once you get the knowledge and experience, you can come back to Nepal and there are a lot of opportunities here. For example, I have been experienced in retail, in international brand. That is very important. Those who are planning to go, I will suggest them at least get some small experience here in Nepal. In retail, we, we are provi providing the excellent, what is the service, customer service. So you will get the experience here and then you can go. And those who are working there as an as a employee, get that experience and explore here. There are huge opportunities. But as honestly speaking, still we don't have you know, enough uh, em employment uh, things here. We are very optimistic. We are getting it soon or it is in the plan. But uh, unfortunately, still now for the youngster, there is no attractive package from the government. So those people who are planning to go, you can go there, but work with the honesty, punctuality, with the integrity, you will get a lot of things there. Money is not everything. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for coming and tell, telling us about your experiences and best of luck in the future. Thank you very much, Martin, for giving this opportunity, uh, sharing my experience in abroad. Let me know what you thought of this episode. You can leave a comment on Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn, or email me at nepalnowpod at gmail.com. Next week, we'll post our second mini-episode, 
from the series we're calling Nepal Now, Right Now. Check it out to hear what we're working on, what listeners are saying about the show, and what's happening in the migration sphere. I'll talk to you then.